Hey everyone! Welcome back to my channel. I've been working on a groovy Halloween costume and I'm going to share with you today how I made it. I had been watching the Austin Powers trilogy on Netflix and about halfway through the second one, Felicity Shagwell dons this gorgeous crochet dress in downtown London. And I am thinking to myself, dang that dress is amazing. I bet I could make it. I think I will make it. And boom, just like that, I had my costume idea. I often get asked, how do I recreate something from just looking at it? Where do I start? There is no pattern from what I can tell for this dress, so I basically need to freehand the whole thing from start to finish. Now this is a very long and tedious process, and I won't be going into every single detail as to how to make the dress, but more so, I'm going to be showing you the overall process of how I recreate the dress and problem solve to make it fit. Now, on a side note, I just have to mention that the Crochet with Ill J theme song, written by Jules Jensen, was inspired by the Austin Powers theme song, also known as Soul Bossa Nova by Quincy Jones. So we're kind of coming full circle here by making this costume, and I just had to point that out. Okay, so where do I even begin when attempting to recreate this dress? The first question I ask myself is, what kind of yarn am I using? Now, because the dress that I'm making is a warm weather dress and will be in contact with my skin, for me, it's a no-brainer to use cotton, 100%. Wool on skin is kind of a no-go unless you're using merino, which is very expensive. Acrylic could work, but it will stretch out more so than the other types of fibers, and I'm just not really a fan of the plasticky feel on my skin it's just kind of gross and sweaty in my opinion but that doesn't bother everyone so you could always use acrylic and if you want to know more about the different types of yarn and fibers check out my video types of yarn i'll link it below in the description so next question i ask myself is what size yarn and hook and i almost always use a medium weight yarn with a four millimeter hook honestly it's kind of my go-to uh, I think the dress would look better in a fingering or sport weight yarn. I think the original dress was made out of smaller yarn and hook, but I honestly ain't got time for that. So <laughs> third question I asked myself is how much yarn? I ended up getting eight of these balls. I got four of each of the two colors, orange and pink. And honestly, just always get more yarn than you think you're going to need. I looked at this dress and thought I would need about three balls of each color. So I got four balls of each color, and what do you know, I ended up using all four of the orange, but only about three of the pink. So I probably could have gone with five orange and three pink, but you know what? It's trial and error, so it's never perfect, and you just gotta, you know, work with what you got. Okay, next thing I do when designing a pattern is sketch it out. Get the... This like really helps to get the overall picture of the dress and in terms of its like individual parts too. So, you know, I draw out the top part and then there's the bottom part which kind of matches and then there's this like meshy part and then the trim. I also image searched the dress for visual reference and I found this webpage, I'll link it below. It looks like the actual dress was auctioned off for thousands of euros which is pretty groovy, baby. It was one of a kind. Upon further research, I found that the original designer is Dina Apple, who did costumes for the film, so shout out to her. I also have stills of the film pulled up on my computer for reference, so using any existing images is obviously helpful, but I still think sketching it out is important in terms of understanding how the individual parts of the dress will go together. And I'll probably start crocheting the dress wherever I start the drawing, because this is clearly an important place to begin. So I began this dress with the top part, the bust portion of the dress, because this part really needs to fit well. This is a very booby dress, and so I want to make sure it's fitting up here really well is flattering around my cleavage and is going to be structurally sound because the rest of the dress is basically draping off of this part. The bottom part will drape off 
this and then the sleeves will drape off the shoulders so as long as this part is looking good I feel like the rest of the pattern is going to be a little bit easier in terms of fitting you can see I started right here and I started with a chain that fit around my my bust area and I started with 90 chain did about three rows of half double crochet and realized it was a little tight to slip over the top of my head so I frogged those three rows and started again with 96 chain then did about 15 rounds of half double crochet and now I did 96 because 96 has a lot of factors so if I ever need to like split the pattern in half or in quarters that's no problem and what I mean is like the, this section and this section these are each one quarter because see how this is a full circle and then these will have equal sides so I actually did have to split it in half from front to back and then right to left and so that's why I started with 96 because you can divide it by four so that's just something to keep in mind when you're like picking out random numbers to start with that like some numbers are going to be better than others and so I did 96 15 rounds of half double crochet and I didn't just do one in each stitch I did two half double crochet in every two stitches it just gives it a little bit more of a texture that she has in that dress it's a little bit meshy if you look close and then to do this portion I started another round but when I got to this point I chained one and turned and went back in the other direction while simultaneously decreasing here on the end and then keeping a straight edge here for the shoulder now this part was a little tricky I probably started it and redid it like three times because I didn't get this right the first time you never get it right the first time that's part of designing is that you try something it, you realize what's not working about it and then you go back and fix it I'm holding it up to my body too I'm constantly like holding it up seeing if it fits and just working from there and once I got one side looking good I um, well, actually ran out of yarn here otherwise I probably wouldn't have cut it there but then I went with a new yarn and did this side and now I will continue doing the strap until it folds over the back and I can sew it on to this back part here and just a quick detail that I'll point out is because I did this section in the rounds and this section back and forth, the texture is slightly different. And if I were to do this again, I'd probably do this bust portion and switch directions as I'm working in the round so that it's the same texture as this part. But it's so subtle, I'm not even going to worry about it. I'm just going to keep going. So I like how it's fitting now. I ended up doing 44 rows from when I started the strap all the way up and around and then sewed it on the back here. And it looks like it's a little high right now, but we need to account for the weight of the dress, pulling this down a bit, and it might end up being more cleavage, which is fine. I counted a little bit of room for that, but if it ends up being too much cleavage, you can always just unsew both of these straps, take out a couple rows, sew them back on, and then we can adjust for height. That way, when we know how much this is going to pull down. So I'm just going to continue now going straight down and work on the bottom part of the dress, and I'll show you how it goes. This is the progress I made, and I'm not loving it. I feel like the spacing is a little off here, whereas I did a, a quad crochet stitch down here. I only done trebles up here, and I feel like the spacing is a little more accurate for the dress, and maybe I need a little less spacing here in the orange. So I'm honestly just probably going to take this whole part out and redo it. 
not just because that but it's also a little bit tight and I want it to be a little more loose so it's like flowy on my body so I'm probably gonna undo this part do some quads here it's gonna make it a little bit longer but I might take out some of this orange too so it should work out in the end um, but it is clear I'm not gonna get all the detail of the original dress in this part they must have used like a size three hook and a lightweight yarn whereas I'm using a medium weight yarn so I'm not gonna be able to get all the detail that she has in that original dress but I'm gonna get as close as I can and fix the spacing a little bit and <sighs> take a deep breath and keep going I'm liking this better. Hopefully it doesn't pull down too much. Mm. I don't know. We'll see. I like how much detail I got in here, but if it pulls down too much, I might have to take some out. We won't know until we try. So I'm almost out of orange yarn now. I got 36 rows in here, and it is covering everything it's a little bit short back here but I also have a little bit of um, pink trim to add and I have a little bit of orange scrap too if I need to add like maybe two more rows to the bottom before the trim but it might stretch here but you know it, it it's stretching mostly in this area and not pulling down as much here as I thought it would but it's okay it still fits and covers everything that it needs to and I'm pretty happy with it. So we're gonna add some trim down here next and then the sleeves will be the last thing. And then a wig and maybe some shoes. This was the first attempt at the trim of the bottom of the dress and it was close but when I put the dress on and it stretched out a little bit on my thighs this trim didn't end up being frilly or flowy enough it was just kind of straight so I had to somehow incorporate an increase in there, which I didn't figure out until later. It took doing the sleeves and making the trim look good on the sleeves and then taking that and then redoing the trim on the bottom of the dress to match it. So this is the trim I ended up with. I did the same stitching here as I did above in the torso section. And then I put those increases in where these quads are. See how I did one and two? One and two quads in each space where I normally would have only put one. So that doubled my stitch count and I was able to do twice as many of these double crochet shells on the bottom, giving it that like extra frilly, flowery 70s look. And I like it much better and it looks better when it's on me and it's draping and flowing. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you now how I did those sleeves. Okay, here's the armpit of the dress. And to make the sleeve, I'm gonna be using the pink yarn. And I'm just gonna be working in these spaces between rows we did here. I'm gonna work all the way around and just work in a circle, doing something similar to what we did here. And yeah, we'll see how that goes. I can already tell here, might be a little too much. I was doing chain five, but we're gonna try maybe chain three in between now. Yeah, see, that's looking better. It's looking straighter, not wavy, which means you have too many stitches. You want it to be as flush as possible. That's how I know that's a good stitch count. So I'm just doing single crochet, chain three, repeat. Uh, 
feel like you might be too big. Might have to decrease because my arm is not that big and I kind of want this to be a little more fitted than that. So I'm going to have to decrease down here somewhere. Either do less chains, maybe try two chains in between, two chain, and <laughs> or maybe just do every other row with three or four chain. So i got a problem solve here, but I don't think that's it actually. So I got this one sleeve done and I'm liking it a lot. It took a few tries to figure out how to decrease a little bit so it wasn't so baggy around my arm. And then the, the trim there took a couple of tries too to get that increase and like the flowiness right. And then I matched that trim on the bottom down here. So that matches. Here's the back. And it's a little droopy on the shoulders right now, but I can always just sew some or crochet some rows to pull this together a little bit. Her dress is actually closed in the back in the original version, but I didn't notice that or do that. So <laughs> um, this is what we're working with. And you know, there did end up being some under boob under here because it's not really pulling the way I thought it was going to. The weight of this is just kind of sitting on my hips, actually. So I ended up just getting a matching bra. And you can't really tell that there's some under boob happening because it is matching. And yeah, I think I'm good to finish this. I have to wear it tomorrow, so I guess I have to finish it. <laughs> Some last minute details I added to the costume include the little orange detail on the sleeves. I just made a long chain, tied it in a bow, and it makes a nice detail and helps keep the sleeves from sliding all over. I also added a little crochet female emblem to wear as a pendant. And then I had to throw in some pink glasses also because that blonde wig was not working with my skin tone. And I don't wear makeup, so... The glasses bring a little color to my face and also help keep that fake hair out of my way. And let's not forget I'm a secret agent so gonna need a mini gun too of course. Add a little crochet to that. <laughs> Voila! One last thing is that although I love how my dress turned out, it is by no means perfect or pattern ready. There are lots of things that I would like to go back and fix now that I've worn it a few times but this is the nature of crocheting wearables. It just never comes out exactly how you think the first time and it's all trial and error and problem solving and repetition and, you know, improving for next time. So I'm just gonna be happy with my dress and I look great and I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit subscribe, like this video, and have a groovy Halloween, baby, yeah!